Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Today, I'm going to be looking into the future. I'm going to be talking about my old school uh, 2020 uh, Rockwood Mini Light 2205S and my uh, Chevy Colorado V6 uh, 2016 edition. My truck can tow 7,000 pounds, apparently. This weighs a little over 5,000 pounds and typically loaded. It's uh, under 6,000 pounds. I have weighed it. So it's a nice combination going down that flat road, okay? So how does this, uh, what kind of juice does this use? This uses uh, batteries and it uses propane. And when I'm hooked up at a resort, a state park, uh, I'm getting full hookups, I'm getting electricity and I use the electricity for the uh, television, for the microwave, for the air conditioner, etc., etc., etc. So everything's pretty much powered by electricity. At least that's the plan. Okay. So in the near future, I'm, I'm uh, using my little sesos here, as they say in Spanish, sesos means brains, and I'm looking into the future, and everything tells me things are going to be very, very, very different. First of all, batteries. Pretty much the whole RV in the future is going to be powered by batteries, okay? There's no longer going to be uh, fossil fuels because, you know, fossil fuels are creating havoc with our environment. Some of you will say, hey, I don't believe fossil fuels are an issue. But, you know, scientists, 99% of them pretty much say, hey, uh, sorry to tell you this, but fossil fuels are damaging our environment, okay? So, we're going to be using a lot more batteries. Where are they going to be located? Underneath? Above? Who knows where? Or if you're at an RV resort, you just plug in, you know, state park, you just plug in and use all their electricity. But if you plan to do some boondocking, you're going to use some batteries. So in the future, we're going to have quite a few batteries under the old RV there. Batteries, batteries. Okay. So you're going to have, uh, you know, 400 amp hours, 800 amp hours, 1600 amp hours. Who knows what you're going to be using. And again, you only need, again, this is for all you newbies out there. You only need a bunch of batteries and a bunch of energy inside your RV if you're not hooked up. But if I'm going to uh, off grid a little bit, off road a little bit, not in this piece of crap, but off, if I had an off road <laughs> travel trailer I need electricity okay because fossil fuels are no longer going to be uh, you know available they're going to be cut off people are going to say hey all you folks out there using fossil fuels you're damaging our environment stop it stop it so you'd have batteries here also if you're driving an EV you're going to be going um I have batteries in that, batteries in that, and batteries in this. Currently, when I drive my uh, Chevy Colorado, I go down the highway, I-35 here, headed towards uh, Alvarado, Waco, Austin, Corpus Christi, Houston, or whatever. We're up north to Denton, Oklahoma City. I get about 23, 24 miles a gallon. But once I'm towing this little not so aerodynamic uh, Rockwood Mini Light, it drops down to what? It drops down to what? It drops down to 9, 10 miles per gallon. Going flat, and that's going flat. Flat to the, you know, Corpus or Houston or flat to Oklahoma City. It's all just flat. So I get 9, 10 miles on a good day, okay? Towing. So that's significantly, you know, less than 23, don't you think? You do the math. 23, not towing. 910 towing okay so if you're towing with an ev again this is a i'm nerding out today i apologize i apologize if you're towing with an ev that's getting about 300 miles of range in that tesla cyber truck or something you're getting 300 miles of range and you're towing this travel trailer it's going to drop from 300 to maybe 200 to maybe even 150 miles of range I'm using 300 miles of range as an example. Okay, you understand that? I'm using it as a, an example. 
So to compensate for that, you have batteries on this. Wow, you have batteries on this, powering some motors, either hub motors in the wheels. Yes, there are hub motors. There's companies out there in Japan, China, and even Germany, Bosch, for example, makes hub motors. Those are motors within the wheel. It's a simple design. And uh, you could have hub motors, so batteries powering hub motors. Wow, that's pretty good, huh? And uh, so right now we got little hub motors. Maybe just make some bigger hub motors for this. And the batteries, you charge it up before you head down the road and you're going, hey, I can get 300 miles with my hub motors towing this. So this is being towed by itself. It's on its own. And you got your, you got your Tesla super, super duper founder's edition uh, $150,000 Cybertruck and you're getting, you know, 300 miles and this is going to get 300 miles. Well, you, hey, that place is 300 miles. You're sad. And once you get there, you can charge up. Okay. So that's the future for RVs. Essentially, RVs with batteries, with hub motors, or other kinds of motors. You know, just regular motors. Motor's a motor, okay? It's nothing brilliant. It's just how good a motor you want, okay? So motors uh, supplying two of the tires, <clears throat> two of the wheels, or four of the wheels. You have options, okay? And then, of course, you have the battery, battery management system, the electronics management system, et cetera, et cetera. So what are the big guzzlers of electricity if you're boondocking? Okay, let's go to the list, boys and girls. Ulcers like me. <laughs> the microwave. Convection microwave. The air conditioner. <laughs> the heater. The electric stove. The electric oven. All those things. They, you know, again, they all use a lot of electricity. What doesn't use much electricity? Your LED lights, typically your television and uh, you know charging your various devices small devices no problem but there's a lot of guzzlers in that sucker okay so in the future hopefully you know with a little bit of solar you'll mitigate it just slightly again solar only mitigates and charges a gigantic a gigantic a gigantic battery just a tiny bit gigantic batteries all the solar you have on the roof charges up just a little bit okay so you're gonna have to charge it up ahead of time or go somewhere and charge it up and get it going that way okay so so that's how I visualize the future right now I uh, towed my with my Chevy Colorado v6 ice engine internal combustion engine and uh, I tow this and I get again what do I get nine ten miles that's not good but if I had a Tesla Cybertruck and uh, in 10 20 years I can probably tow this because it'll have a lot of batteries hopefully cheaper batteries simple motors could be hub motors could be a, you know a motor in the axle one motor two motors four motors who knows how many motors you tell me okay again one of the big problems I find in the EV industry is that they like to make things expensive you know Elon Musk my good buddy Elon Musk uh, said, hey, we're going to bring out a, four, a, a under $40,000 Cybertruck. That was several years ago. And of course, right now, if you want to get a Cybertruck and you want to get in the Founders Edition, you want to get the Founders, uh, whatever they call it, you have to pay 130 grand. You know, under 40, 130 grand. There's a bit of a difference. There's a little bit of a difference. A lot of companies out there will want to make travel trailers, motorhomes, but what will they do first? They'll make the expensive ones. They'll make the $250,000 classy. You know, they'll make the $125,000, $150,000 travel trailer. They'll make the $200,000, <laughs> you know, fifth wheel. So maybe in 10, 20 years, they'll finally figure it out. Maybe it'll be more modular. Maybe you can just throw in some batteries little tray comes out you put in the batteries you know replace those wheels with hub motors 
and uh, you get a nice little battery, battery management system. And all of a sudden, on the old YouTube, instead of folks telling you how to put solar on your roof and how to put batteries right there, they'll tell you how to modify your RV, hopefully, to make it an EV RV. So, this is Jesus Manuel Menegares. I probably missed some points. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, just leave them below, abajo. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll read them, and hopefully you can share and educate me and others. I'm not an electrician. I'm not an engineer. I'm not an electronics engineer like some of my friends are. My brother, he's an electrician. He knows all about this stuff, but he ain't doing me no good because he's in the Baja having cocktails right now. He lives down there. So hope you're doing fantastic. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Muchas gracias a todos a ustedes. And ring the bell for future notifications. What do you think of my uh, nerding out on the subject of uh, EV RVs in combination with EVs and going down that road for 300 miles, 400 miles? Hey, 500 miles, no problem. And then charging up at the resort, at the campground, etc., etc. This has been a Susmando with Managaras. I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. I have a truck right over there ready to run my ass over. Hope you're doing fantastic. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Gracias. Adios. Bye bye. <clears throat> this is my uh, Chevy Colorado uh, V6. Pretty basic. Uh, again, it has a V6, it's a 2016 edition. Going on the highway on a flat road like I-35, it gets about 23. With a little tailwind, it gets about 24 miles per gallon. Not bad, not great, but not bad. When I'm towing my uh, travel trailer, it's getting uh, eight going up hills, nine uh, you know, rolling hills, 10 on a very flat highway, like I-35 heading towards the coast or heading towards Oklahoma. That's how many miles I get. Again, 10, count them, 10, from 23 to 10. <laughs> what do you think? 